You are a very sexy man. In the, the sexy. <laughs> you are you are constantly. Oh, you shouldn't. I know. It's, uh, <laughs> Not me, it's just the rest. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you constantly talked about it in a sex symbol. What, well, do, what do you feel when, when people, when this is said about you, that you are a sex symbol and all that? One, of, lust after you. one of my uh, my first teachers and, and mentors, you know, a, a guy by the name of Bob Stone, God rest his soul, he said, you know, if you're ever intimidated by anyone and, and when you're moving up in the business, and he also thought I would do well in the business, he said, just, just think about them sitting on the toilet with a their pants down. <laughs> so for all of those that think of me as some sexy, super sexy, <laughs> just imagine me. <laughs> Not my girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and if you still think that that's sexy, then you have a real problem. <laughs> What about you as, as a child? Were you always uh, devastating with the ladies as, as a child? Yes, I was. Well, you're thanks for bringing that up. Well, I just wanted, I mean... Um, <laughs> you know, I was the same. Yeah, I was a... You know, I was You're a bit... awkward with, with the opposite sex. The opposite sex? Is that what he means girls? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I did, you know, who knows? Uh, you know, I... Uh, yeah, every, I think every kid is. You know, for a long period of time, you are until uh, until alcohol comes into the play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that frees you. It smooths things over yes. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I read somewhere that, that in fact they, they used to actually make you um, go through kissing practice. Not them. Them. No, no. Their friends. Leanne. Uh, yeah, her friends. They're at that age where they wanted to practice. With their boyfriends. So that school bell rang, and I was sprint home when I knew her friends were going to be there. Her friends would take me into the bathroom and practice, you know, <laughs> teach me how to French kiss and, uh, you know, you've got to breathe when you're kissing, you know. The first time I was kissing, I thought I'm going to pass out because <laughs> I'm holding my breath, you know. You're in a fishbowl and all of those things, but you also only have each other because nobody else really understands. So you sort of really have this kind of little cocoon bubble that you exist in together. And that's quite romantic. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm a romantic, so I love, you know, anything. <laughs> but, yeah, our life would be, we would go to Rome, and the things that you give up when you're well-known are sometimes you can't. I mean, I, I really push through this stuff, but for him, you know, he wouldn't want to walk down the street during the daytime or couldn't walk down the street during the daytime because of people coming up or, or whatever. So we would see cities at night. We'd sort of break out of the hotel room and and run around at 3 a.m. in the morning and just do it that way. And run I run around the Colosseum. Yeah, we <laughs> broke into the Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> Going to research, you had an ambition to be an astronaut at this time. <laughs> well, see, that's why I wanted to go into space, just to float around. I just wanted to go out on a spacewalk. And the the, earth, the closest I could come to it was we had a above ground pools. I don't know what you'd call them. We call them doughboy pools. Yeah. You know, it's a, a it's a corrugated piece of metal and a little rubber thing. You sit in it. I would I would go I would go out there at three feet of water and I would put a, a brick in the back of my pants. Uh, and sometimes I go I go out sort of like fully clothed because I wanted to like pretend I had a spacesuit on. So I put a brick in the back of my pants and I didn't have gloves, but I put socks on my hands so that they would look like I look like an astronaut in a pressure suit. And uh, I would drape a uh, uh, a garden hose over the side of the pool so I could breathe it. And I just lay there on my back, you know, with this brick in my pants, just kind of like letting my limbs float around <laughs> with it sucking air through a garden hose under three feet, which is not easy to do because no. of the pressure. So you, you, I was down there for hours. Like, So my family would come out, where's oh, the garden? Oh, oh, Tom's in floating, it's doing a space walk. <laughs> the pool, I'd be there with my socks on my hands. And I would bring like like little toy, you know, sticks or, you know, I'd bring some, like a spatula from my mom's uh, kitchen, pretend it was a space age device to be a ladder. And I'd pretend to be fixing the ladder. This <laughs> would, for, for the longest time, and finally my older brother, he'd come out and he'd take the hose, and of course he'd crimp it. And I'd just <laughs> like, like, like that. Well, you're in the Star Wars movies too, aren't you? Yes, it? it is so incredible. I don't know what you guys did. There are other people with you all the time. Sometimes yeah. there's, there's me and you and, and you know maybe somebody else, but most times it's just me in a big green room and George going action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like that kid 
game where you're in a room by yourself and you made up all these things that are attacking you and you're fighting them and you're having a great time doing it and you got your own little music going. And you look at George and he's like, there's a big thing coming at you. Uh, how big, George? Uh, big as a car. What, 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 what about a kind of car? A Range Rover. Okay. How many are there? Oh, there are about 30 more. There's an okay cut. You go. <sighs> and why would you rather hear that? Uh, just for fun. No, for, for a movie, uh, this actually isn't all my hair. I, I, I is it a scoop? No, this is extensions. Oh, really? Would you like to know that? I oh, would. I would mean, you? I mean, that's, it's about nine hours of like someone pulling on your pubic hair. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lot of fun, but the result is bad. You might have to cook, really, in one film. Yeah. <laughs> we had a cookery class by an ex heroin addict in Glasgow. <laughs> For transporting, and we were, it was like the generation game. There was five or six actors lined up along this table, and he showed us first, you know, how to cook up a shot of heroin. And then, he, and then we then we all had to do it ourselves, and he kind of walked back and forward along the line. <laughs> More bicarbonate, so that's so funny. It gives us marks out of ten. You know. Is there anything that's a, that's eluded you? Any part that you wanted that you've not yet played? James Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Why James Bond? Because I don't think he's ever been played correctly. <laughs> What's missing? Well, when you get a part and you're an actor, you look at the frame of the, de you know, the, 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 the part is defined, and you're supposed to play what it says it is. And no one's ever played him for what he is. Well, how would you play him? He's an assassin. He'll kill anybody that he's told to kill. He doesn't care who it is. He'll screw any girl jumping off the curb. <laughs> he's a womanizer. <laughs> he doesn't really like women, you know? He bangs them once and that's it. <laughs> Sounds like my brother. <laughs> And when they saw my tribute at Lincoln Center, I kind of forced them to go. Because they, for the longest time, just thought I worked in a trailer. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, they, they were showing. I sat there and I suddenly realized, oh my God, you know, they're going to show film clips. That had never entered my mind. And it was a really big deal. And I thought, well, it'll be tasteful. But there's a little bit of sex. And every time I looked over, I think my one son was like 12 and the other one was 11, 10 or something. And I'd look over, and my older one would be going, <laughs> and the little one would just be laughing. And so at the end, I said, "Well, what did you think?" And and the older one said, oh, "You know, did it never occur to you that you might have children?" <laughs> and the younger one, I said, "Well, what did you think, Miles?" And he said, "It was great, Mom, but scarring." <laughs> and I did an audition, and they they gave me the part of the snub nosed lieutenant. <laughs> Which was great. It was a wonderful part, that yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it? it was great. I mean, yeah. you look back at that now and see how important it was. But, but it's very funny. When I, I thought to myself, well, he's an authority figure. I know what I'll do. I copy Prince Philip. <laughs> he always has his hands behind his back. Because powerful people don't have to open doors. And they don't have to wave hands at you to get your attention. You listen. So they're always very still. <laughs> you know, and I put my hand behind my back. And everywhere you go in Zulu, you see me go, what's going on? And I've got my hands behind my back. And Stanley Baker showed me a telegram he got from the Hollywood when, the, when they saw the rushes. He said, fire Michael Caine, doesn't know what to do with hands. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, an Academy Award nomination for portraying a man who I had one or two run-ins with in my career, and that was Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. um, it was an extraordinary portrayal. I mean, in many ways, you must have imagined yourself that, that, that it was an impossible job when they came and asked Absolutely. You. I mean... Uh, there, any any aspect of that film is more than enough work for one movie. If it's just learning how to box, you know yeah, that awesome. you know it, it was a year and a half of physical training. Sure. Then the dialect, you know, trying to understand, you know, trying to get the man's voice right, you know, and all them things. It was just very very difficult. You all spent time with him, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, spent, we yeah. spent a lot of time together. And, and what kind of relationship did you have with him? You know, the, he personally asked me to, to, to do the film, and, you know, that was a, a shock and, and an honor. 
And, you know, I said to him, you know, I was like, Champ, well, you know, why, why me? What, why do you want me to do it? He said, because you're the only person that's almost as pretty as me. <laughs> So we, we met, and in fact, we had met before in 1981 in the company of the greatest fighter I ever saw, who was Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. And we were at a, 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 in, his, in his suite. In his suite, with the George Boy, suite. I remember that indeed. Yeah, we were up in his suite, and I remember going in, and do you remember there were children there? Yes, I do. And Ali, I mean, right. the, he's famous for it, went straight for the kids. Right. And we were all ignored for a few minutes. Yeah. But then eventually we formed a semicircle, and he was eventually coming around. And shaking hands with everybody. And my knees were genuinely shaking. It was surreal, you're going to meet your hero. And I thought, I have to say something to him because I'll never get the chance in my life again. And as he came up to me, I just went, Muhammad, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and my girlfriend, Jenna, went, 